بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم انشقاق meaning the centering or tearing apart this is the 84th surah of quran and it has a total of 25 ayahs this surah tells us about when the sky will split sky will split earth will expand let's look into their detail in the previous surahs we find that at the end that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who warns us that an enormous day is coming that people need to prepare for and now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is giving us a sign of this when the sky is completely torn and this is different to infiltrate which is to be torn along the length of something in shiqaq however from shak is to be torn completely and in arabic is used when you tear something which you do not normally associate with tearing in the quran this word is used to describe the earth and the moon being cracked and torn open you would associate tearing with something like cloth but not huge thing like the earth or the sky in the second part earth will expand allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who makes us reflect on our shadows how they become longer and stretched as time passes by and this is a very picturistic way that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gets us to reflect on how time is passing the stretch of the earth is also described in the following hasan hadith abu huraira reported allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who said when the day of resurrection happens allah will stretch the earth like leather until the point where there will be no place to move except the place where a person's two feet are and i muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam will be the first to be called and jibril will be on the right side of the most merciful allah by allah this will be the first time jibril will see his lord allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah's messenger will say to Allah this is the one angel jibril that informed me that you Allah have sent him to me so Allah will reply sadaq you have said the truth in the next part in this surah we're told about the struggle of man this verse is a central message in this surah one of the origins of the word insan is nasiya which means to forget so one of the meaning of this beginning is o oh, forgetful human being you have forgotten where you come from and your destiny and this addresses humanity not just muslims the earth and the sky did not forget the phrase innaka gadihun means that you are actively engaged in toiling labor part of life is to struggle for things and certain milestones for example a pay raise and for every milestone we work hard kada has been described as a struggle towards something without any distinction as to whether it's good or bad you are just engaged in striving for it and immersed in it to extend that it exhausts you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who says that with all these milestones you forget where you are heading you are actually on a motorway and these milestones are just small steps where will you end up you will end up with your lord whatever you are engaged in whether it's good or bad you are headed to your lord subhanallah book of deeds in right hand the word yamin does not just mean right hand in arabic it is also an expression of power and expression of an agreement for example in days when contracts were not written the right hands were shaken and this signified a done deal thus on a day when many have been weakened this man has been 
empowered to the point that he can go around in a state of joy and ease, running around knowing he has fast, inviting others to read his book, even though they are distracted by their own deeds. He knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who by placing the book in his right hand, which also signifies honor, has made an agreement and given him honor and the promise to paradise, at which point all the nervousness of him has gone as he knows where he is headed. The, the next part is book of deeds from behind. In another surahs in Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who talks about the one who is given his book in his left hand, but here he does not say this. He says the book is given behind his back. According to many tabi'in and also some companions, when the criminals are sent forward, they are chained. The, their right hand is chained to, to their neck and their left hand is tied behind their back. Here the criminal is given his book in his left hand which is behind his back thus clarifying and satisfying both passages. Others have commented that they would hide it behind their back out of shame. This man cannot read his book as it is behind his back, but he knows that it's bad news as it is in his left hand. Next to this, we talk about sa'i. The word sofa means soon and sabur means death. Soon after receiving this book, the criminals see the blazing hellfire and cries out of his death and destruction so that he can be spared from going there. Dawa is different to nida in Arabic. Nida is call meant for anybody, but addressing someone specifically is. So this man is calling out, looking specifically towards the angel as he cannot see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pleading for them to kill and destroy him. Thus far, in these surahs, the word used to describe the hellfire has been jahim, but we now see a switch to sair. Whenever you find sair in the Quran, you also find sabur. So the two are connected, and this exhibits the consistency of Quran. In the previous surahs, these criminals would laugh at the believers and wink at each other in mockery when they would pass them and then return to their families saying, these are the ones who are lost. Look at the change of tone now. These same people will cry out of their own destruction. This is the Quran's way of making the criminal, if he has any good left in him, visualize the consequence of the evil that he is doing. If there is any desire in them left to do good, they will take heed from this warning and stop what they are doing. The next part is oath of twilight, night, and moon. The word tasak means to become full and complete. This verse also continues the theme of gradual inevitability as the moon also goes through phases until it becomes full. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's letting us know that the clock is clicking and that time is passing by. Just like the previous verses describe how man is inevitably heading towards his Lord, these verses describe the sky inevitably becoming darker and red, turning into the night and the moon inevitably becoming full. Next part says, rising from one level, to another. In Surah Abasa, we learned that on the day of judgment, people will run away from their family, yet here we learn that they will be running towards them. This is reconciled in Tafsir by understanding that the word Ehl means your people, and this includes those people who believed with you. Your love for your family on that day will 
be associated with those who believed with you. Shahada itself can be considered to make you part of the bigger and more significant family. For example, no alayhi salam felt pain for his son when he was drowning and Ibrahim alayhi salam was concerned about his father. That concern will be gone by the day of judgment. The word masrura means delighted and comes from surur, related to the word sir, which means secret. It's the kind of joy you feel deep in your heart and is not apparent on your face. A deep lasting inner joy and not the superficial temporary joy that crosses your face. Imagine that the person entered into Jannah here is entered into a higher level than his family. This verse implies that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take the people on the lower levels of Jannah and bring them up to the higher levels with his family rather than the believer on the higher level traveling down to visit them. And this is an odd mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who bestows. The next part tells us about disbelievers' denial of Quran. When the Quran is read to disbelievers, they do not prostrate. In the tradition of the Arabs and the ancient Egyptians, there was a tradition of prostrating when people were overwhelmed and in awe of something. There is a lot of evidence of this in Quran and in the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Take, for example, the prostration of Yusuf alayhi salam. Also in ancient Arab history, there was a talented poet called Lubaid. When he recited his work, saw poets prostrate to him and hang his poetry on the wall of Kaaba. Thus, there is an established tradition of prostrating when hearing something overwhelming and powerful. For this perspective, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is calling into them and asking what is wrong with them that they do not fall into sajda when they hear the Quran, meaning they know it is so powerful and that they have not heard anything like it before, yet they do not give in and fall into sajda. Rather, they hold themselves back. Furthermore, the disbelievers would wail and cut themselves off from the Quran so they would not have to hear it. In the last part, punishment for the disbeliever is mentioned. This is the continuation of the style of the previous surah, which ended with sarcasm, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who asks whether the disbelievers got a good compensation for what they used to do. Similarly, this verse instructs to give them good news of and congratulate them on a painful punishment. This is a warning to those criminals that if something has caused them to change, after all these points of reflection have been given, then punishment is the only suitable reward for them. And the only thing left to give them is a sarcastic comment about the hereafter, just like they have been sarcastic. SubhanAllah.